This is basically a representation of how satellites move around the world. It's not, they aren't perfectly spaced like this image. We have U.S., we've got 32 orbiting, we've got 28 that we can actually actively take signals from. Uh, they are actually more, some of them are in clusters. They've sent up like maybe two new satellites to replace an old one. Uh, the reason we've only got 28 actually active, we've 32 orbiting, because we've got four right now that are inactive, or that are not accurate all the time. The thing that's coming is we've got other countries. They haven't opened it up for us to use yet with U.S. consumer grade electronics. The commercial companies are using these satellite sources, but you start looking at when they do open them up, we've got a tremendous amount of satellites, uh, I mean over 100, over 100 different satellites that we can use to track at one time. So we can start, tra the more we can track, the more precision we can have in our waypoint. One of the things, Hummingbird, we started with a GR4, now we're in a GR50 now. Basically the last number is gonna tell us the number of satellites we can track at one time. Our accuracy has improved a little bit. The 300 to all, uh, 300 series, all the way up to 1100 series, is a 50-channel GPS receiver. Two and a half meter accuracy, internal or external. So you're not losing any accuracy as far as the potential of that unit. The inaccuracy would be because of transducer placement, or receiver placement. This is basically an industry standard test. You put the boat in a, you put the receiver in a fixed position, and you plot the course for 24 hours. This is how they develop that two and a half to three meter accuracy. This was three meter accuracy. You can't see the lines of it, but 95% of the returns are within three meter accuracy, and they can advertise that accuracy. This is our new. This was a GR16 watching 16 satellites. Our new GR50 is two and a half meter accuracy. But look. You look out here. Look at some of these these things, these actually position locations that we're off. Yeah. We're not getting that anymore. And this is due to software that Hummingbird has of tracking that and making the exact location. The higher you got, higher accuracy levels, and we can track more satellites. Allows for faster acquisition. And when you hook it, and an internal unit is always going to be four times per second refresh rate. If you hook the receiver direct to the unit, if you're interlinking and hook it in the interlink box, it'll be one time per second. If you hook it direct to the unit with the, with the latest software from last year, if you had soft, put an update since last year, you'll get four times per second hooked to the unit that it is hooked to. With Ethernet now, it's, it will share four times per second refresh rate between both units, sharing one receiver. If you chose to set these. One of the big things is going to your diagnostics view. Hit your, view, hit your master menu, hit your menu button twice, brings up view. You come down here and turn this on to visible, it will bring up a screen like this. What this screen does, this shows our tracking of our satellites. Currently, right now, the Government tells us for consumer grade you can only look at 18 satellites. You can only display tracking 18 satellites. The unit can be locked. We've got a 50 channel receiver. If we can get more than 18, we we can hold, we can have a lock on them, but we can't you we can't display that data because of precision. The big thing here is the strength of that that black bar there versus the gray here. Right. That tells us the strength of return from that satellite. The big thing is our position here, this is the horizon. 12 and 30 are just starting to come up on the horizon. 14, 3, and 48 are starting to leave the horizon. So I can, with a 50 channel receiver, I can hold a lock on these satellites longer. <coughs> these, I'm probably, if they're going off the horizon, I'm not as worried about them, But I want to capture these faster because I, I want to capture that and hang on to that satellite as it starts coming up more easily. The more these start going off, this allows me to keep more even consistent tracking. With by being able to track 50 satellites, we're going to have more precision of our GPS waypoint. 
the other big things on this is the fixed height. If you have two satellites, you can get a 2D fix. When you get three or more, you get 3D fix. And a hand spin tells me I'm looking at the WASP satellites, which are a correctional satellite that stay in a fixed position as the Earth moves. They move with the Earth. If I knew what these numbers were, I could tell you which one was the WASP, but I don't know their exact number. They, so the, these are basically names for the names of the satellites spinning around in here. So if you're two and a half meter accuracy, should you bother moving your puck or not? I mean, the puck's like two and a half meters. We're going we're gonna to get into that real quick. Okay. But the, if you, the other thing in here is this horizontal solution of precision. This is a level of accuracy. The other one is your position error. These two features here, if you're if you're looking, your waypoints are off. You mark today and tomorrow they're off. It could be this position error has increased. 9-11, uh, I was on Truman Lake. It went to 573 foot. I was running down the channel and I was being mapped on the ground because I was 20 miles from Whiteman Air Force Base when they were sending B-2 bombers to go visit Mr. Iraq over there. But the government, in the time of need, I have been told, can change and scramble the signal. Because if you had a handheld, we could go to Whiteman Air Force Base and say, you know, a terrorist or somebody like right. that, they could start getting right. pretty close. But the other things is basically you can see your altitude, your speed over ground, uh, your course heading. These are the other two things. If you're running a map card or a blank SD card to capture screen capture, this is going to tell you if the unit's reading. This is basically telling me I got a South Premium chip in my, in my left card reader. By the way, I got a blank SD card. So if you're having problems there, you can come over this screen and you see if it's reading. Uh, basically, time and date, your position, external receiver is where we're reading this data from. This is just basically your readouts that you're seeing. Uh, GPS is is so simple when you really understand what it's doing. All the satellite's doing is beaming down, it's this time, to like the hundredth of a second, I'm making this out. It, each one is beaming a time, it, so it takes in, it's 12.01 here, 12.02 here, 12.03 here, this is your spot in the earth. And that's, and it's, so a time, a time measurement is all it's listening for. The horizontal collision of precision, Basically, 20, 20 is the force level. If we looked at that one, we we're at 0.73. They're telling, and this is from actually Wikipedia, excellent is 1 to 2. So this tells me the accuracy that I'm getting on that waypoint for repeatability. Now, there is two types of repeatability. You've got pass to pass or year to year. If you get into the ag industry or construction industry, they're planting down this, planting the field this year, they come back and spray it. They want to be able to run that sprayer exactly right down that same road. And then next year, come in and plant it again. Well, that that is done with subscription services where they're getting very super high accuracy. But for a consumer grade electronic to get down in this area <coughs> is, is very difficult yeah. without without good equipment and good placement. So using this to be more accurate on your waypoint,